And this question is for anyone who wants to answer. This is from Eli. He's a little boy um, out here in Vestal, and he wants to know where you guys sleep. Do you sleep in bunks, on the floor, or do you float? Uh, well, we actually sleep in, uh, we just sleep floating in space. We have sleeping bags that will unroll and we'll uh, usually stretch uh, along a wall or uh, on the ceiling perhaps, but uh, we'll just stretch them between two locations, pull them taut, and uh, you climb into your sleeping bag and you sleep like that. It's very comfortable. It's a great place to sleep. And uh, a little girl named Mira wants to know if training is hard to be an astronaut. You know, training is, is not really hard. It's a lot like being in school. You have a lot of different things to study, and then, you know, when we go on a mission, it's kind of like our open book test because we have to demonstrate that we learned everything that we we're supposed to learn. But it's a lot of fun, too, because you get to learn different things every day. Just like you change different subjects in your classes at school, we change subjects all the time, so we're learning a vast array of new things, and it's fun to do that. And Samantha wants to know, what kind of food do you guys eat up there? I know that you'll be having a big feast, um, you know, with the public, NASA's planning. So um, I guess tell me what that's going to be like and on a regular basis what kind of food you guys will be eating. Well, we have a lot of different kinds of food we can eat. Um, we can uh, we can have like uh, normal stuff that's uh, kind of like the army would eat, just kind of uh, heat it up and eat it. Like uh, today, I had tuna noodle casserole. We have other stuff that's dehydrated, kind of like camping food. We have some shrimp cocktail that's pretty popular uh, around here that we like to eat too. So um, we have a, a lot of different variety, and the food is good. It's it's come a long ways, and uh, and it's fun to taste different types of things we have to eat here. And what's the first thing? Um you guys plan to do when you come back to Earth? Well, uh, I think we all wouldn't mind taking a shower uh, <laughs> once we get back to crew quarters there at Kennedy Space Center. But, uh, you know, our biggest thing is just to, to make sure that we get to share it with all the great folks down at Kennedy Space Center and uh, thank them for their 30 years of work on this uh, awesome space shuttle vehicle that we got to fly. All right, thank you guys so much. Good luck with the rest of your mission, and we're all proud of you down here. Well, thanks a lot, and i uh, just like to say hi to all my family and friends back in Binghamton. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WICZ-TV portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KGO-TV. Definitely. Roll. Atlantis ISS, this is KGO TV. How do you hear me? Hello, KGO TV. This is the International Space Station. How do you copy us? You sound fantastic. Uh, Commander Ferguson, if I could start with you, uh, I guess uh, today would be, oh, the glory of being an astronaut. You get to move stuff into the uh, International Space Station and, and drag the garbage out. Uh, not the most glorious day, but the work that has to be done. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you, you pretty much hit the nail on the head there. That is exactly what we're doing. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot of a lot of stuff we need to supply this International Space Station with to sustain them for about a year. So uh, a lot of it's food, a lot of it's clothing, a lot of it is spare parts. And uh, hauling out in the uh, in the other direction, I wouldn't call it garbage. It's it's mostly broken things. It's things that need to go back to the ground. They want to take a look at it. They want to know why it failed, so they can make make it better the next time they send it up. All right, Specialist Magnus, I'd like to ask you a question. How are you and how are the others from your observation uh, reacting to uh, this being the last shuttle? mission, what are the emotions as you look about knowing that it's not going to happen again? Well, you know, that's something we've been dealing with, the whole training flow. We've we've had a lot of last events, you know, last training event in the motion-based simulator, the last training event in Building 9 where our full-scale mock-ups are, the last interaction with some of uh, the great people at Kennedy Space Center. And as we've gotten closer and closer to launch, it, it it's hitting a, it hit us more and more powerfully that this really was it and i think uh after we get back down to the ground after landing it's going to hit us really hard and i think we're all going to have a really hard time 
leaving the shuttle and doing the walk around and greeting the people down there and, and just closing out the program that way. I mean, we'll be really excited that the hopefully the mission went well, but we'll be very sad, too, because it was a it's a great program. Uh, Pilot Hurley, a, a question for you, if I could. Uh, America is watching this space shuttle mission more intensely than any in years, many years. Uh, is, is the historic aspect of this mission on your minds? How do you go about your day with that? present uh to be real honest with you i don't think it is we uh you know i think most of us our whole lives have been very focused and goal oriented and uh this is just one more of those things that we're doing you know we're so focused on the task you're doing that particular minute or that particular hour and then you know, task after task and, uh, you know, EVA that we did yesterday and transfer that we're doing today, you know, it keeps us so focused that we, we tend not to, I think, look at the big picture as much. And I, and I think we're kind of all telling ourselves that, you know, we'll have time to kind of reflect on this, uh, this whole event, this whole happening that, we, that we've gone through for the last nine months uh, and, and hopefully be able to share it and articulate it with everybody else. And finally, for Specialist Walheim, if I could, uh, the local boy who made so good, uh, I just wanted to ask you, uh, with that last spacewalk yesterday, you're, you're someone who has done several of those. Uh, as that was going on, last one with the shuttle, uh, your thoughts and your emotions. Well, it was a it was a, uh, a wonderful sight. It was a it was a pleasure to be a part of it, and it was kind of unique for me because I've been outside on spacewalks for five times, but it's been about nine years since I've been inside while the spacewalk is going on. So when those guys come right up to the window in the spacesuit, it's just a real uh, sci-fi type of look, and it was uh, it was very interesting, and it was a, it was a lot of hard work, and I was really proud of the uh, the spacewalkers, Ron Garen and Mike Foster. They did an awesome job, got all their tasks done, even got a bonus one done. Um, and another one for you, uh, Specialist Walheim, uh, now that there are going to be no more shuttles to fly, uh, what becomes of someone who was uh, known for his uh, flying on the shuttles? What are you going to be doing next? What's up for you? Well, for me, I just want to continue to be involved in, uh, in the program at NASA. We've got uh, the continuing operations here on the space station. The space station is now complete. Uh, we can end the, the assembly phase, and now we're entering the, uh, the utilization phase where we can do that groundbreaking research to find uh, new ways to treat diseases, find out new ways to help us to be able to stay in space longer, our human body. And then we're also going to try to go beyond low Earth orbit. So I think that's really exciting, building a new system to, to get past uh, the, uh, the space station's altitude up to, uh, you know, the... the the altitude of the moon or to uh, an asteroid or maybe to Mars one day. And so we've got to build those systems, and I want to be involved in helping to build those. Well, we only have a, maybe 20 seconds for your answer, and I, I hope that's fair. But I was wondering if you could say to young people who still think about going into space, we're talking about Mars, we're talking about meteors, what is it, what gives you the most excitement when you are up there or going up there? Where is that, that major rush? Well, that, I would have to give that two things. Number one is launch. Anytime you get slung off the planet from zero to 17,000 miles an hour in eight and a half minutes, you can't help but get in an adrenaline rush, and that is absolutely spectacular. And then when you get up here, just looking back on the Earth, uh, 220 miles down, and uh, a couple days ago I had a chance to uh, see California from space again, and uh, I could see the Bay Area. It was a little bit foggy, but uh, I could see the outline of it, and uh, to think I was a kid uh, down there uh, many years ago looking up at the airplanes and dreaming of flying one day, and here I am on the International Space Station cruising along at Mach 25. It's just amazing. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. It's, uh, it really is dreams do come true with a little bit of persistence and some hard work. All right. To all of you, thank you so much. America's watching, and I uh, look forward to seeing you back here next week. Yeah, we, we appreciate that, and uh, I just wanted to say hi to all my, uh, my friends and, and, uh, and, and folks I know and my relatives in the Bay Area. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. Atlantis ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, WBNG TV, WICZ TV, and KGO TV. Atlantis ISS, we are now resuming operational audio comms.